So here's a gunpowder from a single 308 Winchester uh, hunting rifle round. So will it go boom, or burn at lightning speed, or just kind of sizzle along? Let's find out. Not exactly lightning speed. If you're running away with a keg of gunfire, a gun gunpowder, and this fire was chasing you, you'd run a long way before it caught you. So as long as the gunpowder isn't in a compressed situation like it would be um, inside a shell casing with the bullet in front of it, it just it burns at a pretty slow rate. Uh, what makes the boom happen is when it is compressed and the gases that are formed have nowhere to go, it, then it wants to burn all at once and you know, the gases force their way out of wherever they're going and that's what uh, makes this guy <laughs> travel away. So Maybe not quite as impressive as one might have thought. Still don't do this in your basement though. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same exercise, uh, but this time with the contents of a shotgun slug. And here's a, uh, a close-up of the gunpowder, which in this case um, looks like little tiny flat discs or pancakes, which is very different from the rifle uh, rounds gunpowder, which kind of looked like grains of sand. But anyways, we'll set it alight, and we'll see what it does. How far away should I be? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Angie wasn't here for the first one, so she's oh a bit nervous. Oh my god. Move back another six inches. About like that? <laughs> yeah, you should be okay. You'll, you'll see it. The, the match actually will be more vigorous than the gunpowder. Oh, actually that burns way faster than the, than the rifle round, which is interesting. <laughs> so That was terrifying. Yeah, actually that was quite a bit more vigorous than I was thinking it would be. I guess lots of surface area with those discs. So what we've got here, uh, of course I had to kind of mangle this to get all the components out, but all the gunpowder lives uh, down inside this, this brass part, so the brass is, is strong. And the gunpowder is held in place by this little plastic disc, and that kind of keeps it down inside the, uh, the brass. Then we've got this sort of uh, wadi thing. Is it felt? Well, it, it is now. You're a cornball. Yeah, I know. And, <laughs> and then this little plastic disc. So the pur purpose of this thing is is to cushion the impact so that um, th this piece of lead doesn't get deformed. So this sort of cushions the impact of the powder exploding. And this thing here, it's a hard piece of plastic, just transfers the force evenly to the bottom of the slug. And you can see the rifles in the slug, so even though it's coming out of a shotgun, this is what it's designed for, a smooth barrel shotgun, uh, this thing will spin in flight and stabilize. And you can see it's kind of mostly hollow. The, uh, the weight really is concentrated on the tip, and it's sort of hollow and with some surface area back in here, and it will perform actually quite a lot like a uh, badminton birdie. And that's what keeps it stable in flight. So the spinning helps. But a lot of its stability just comes from the weight being up front and a lot of surface area at the back. Just like a badminton birdie flying along. Hmm. And so you can see the difference between that and say a 308 uh, hunting rifle. Wow. Or a... Um, uh, well this has got a little bit beaten up when I pulled them out of his case, but uh, 762 by 39 uh, round from an SKS or an AK-47 takes the exact same ammunition. So you don't have a 22 as an example? I don't have one here. I've got one upstairs. Maybe we'll uh, maybe I'll grab the, the 45 and the 22 and we'll put these guys all together so we can mm -hmm. have a shot with them all together. So explain to me again where the, uh, the stuff was. <laughs> where what? Where it was. Okay, so gunpowder. 
gunpowder goes in first. Yeah, so it, uh, we get this in frame. The gunpowder all lives within this brass Okay, and enclosure. then everything else goes on top of it. Yeah, everything else stacks up kind of like this. And this guy here stacks right on top. So basically these guys all live right on top of the gunpowder like this. Okay. So you'll actually see the tip of this guy right at the right at the top of the um, the hull of the of the oh. chuckle. So it'll in a slug you'll kind of see it sitting just like that. Right. Whereas with birdshot it'll all be enclosed because otherwise the little tiny pellets of lead will just spill all over the place. Well, that was exciting. Yeah, that was actually a little more boisterous than I was expecting. Anyways, we'll. Uh, Cut for a moment and we'll come back with the other uh, bits of lead that I've got. Okay, so now we've got sort of a full set of everything. Um, so what we have here is a um, 22 long rifle. This is a, like a full bullet, um, well, a full round, so it's got primer, casing, and bullet. And that's what the bullet looks like all by itself. So really tiny, very little recoil, inexpensive to shoot. Uh, inexpensive to buy. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> guess it doesn't cost anything to shoot, it's just buying the oh, stuff that's the problem. That's right. <laughs> uh, this is for, uh, 45 ACP. It's a handgun, usually a handgun round. Um, 45 caliber. Uh, if you ever watch Magnum PI, I guess I'm dating myself a bit, but he used a gun that was uh, a 45. And that's what the bullet looks like. And interestingly, um, you can see these little striations here, these little marks on the bullet. And you can see this bullet is uh, not exactly you know, as nice and round as this guy. It's because this one's actually been fired and uh, dug it out of the, uh, the berm, the, the dirt behind the target. And uh, these marks here are actually uh, they made up with the, the rifling in, in the uh, gun's barrel. So, like when the forensic guys, you know, if you see on a TV show or whatever, and they try to get a bullet out and they try to match it forensically to the gun, that's what they're trying to do is to march, uh, match these markings uh, to, the rif uh, to the rifling on the barrel. And they'll also try to match any markings that are on the brass to um, sort of the back end of the gun, to the receiver area, because it can also leave unique marks. And that's different from these rifling marks. So you see on the shotgun slug, this is a, a slug that's designed to be shot out of a smoothbore shotgun. Um, the smoothbore means that the, the barrel doesn't have any rifling. So they uh, put the these riflings kind of imprinted into the lead on the projectile to help it spin and also to, to help it uh, expand and, and snugly fit into the barrel. Um, so the next guy here um, I use this in my uh, SKS. It's a Russian World War II era field rifle. Um, exactly the same round is used in the AK-47. Uh, so it's 7.62 by 39 millimeters is the, the dimensions of it. So this is what the round looks like you know, pristine. This is probably 20 year old Polish army surplus ammunition. And this is what it looks like uh, after Someone's grabbed it with a pair of pliers and pulled it out of the uh, out of the shell casing. But it hasn't been fired. Has not been fired. And exactly the same sort of thing. A very similar bullet you can see here with this uh, 308 Winchester. Mm -hmm. um, but look at the difference in the amount of powder that can be held in this uh, in this right. casing. Right. So this this guy here packs a lot more punch. It's a faster bullet. It can reach out further with accuracy. Um, but the bullet itself. Very similar. Yeah, they're almost the same size, aren't they? Yep. And the way these bullets work, and all of these things work on the same principle, is at the back end here, there's a, a primer. It's basically like a, a little powder charge. It's different from gunpowder, but if it if you strike it hard with a with a hammer or with a nail or something like that, it'll it'll explode and send sparks into the inside of the round, where the gunpowder lives. Gunpowder then gets ignited and it wants to expand as it burns. The gases want to expand and because it's in a, in a rifle barrel or a shotgun barrel with nowhere for the, it, for the uh, gases to expand other than to push the bullet forward and out the empty end of the barrel, that's how the bullet moves down or how the shotgun slug moves. 
can we see the, uh, the shotgun slug in in the... Uh, you want to see the business end of it? No, oh, in pristine condition. Oh, yeah. Well, th th this here really is pristine. I just... Uh, no, I mean, without having been ripped apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, what it looked like before I got my uh, knife and pliers onto it. Um, right. Yeah. So same idea here. So this round button here <clears throat> is the primer. Um, so uh, the firing pin will strike that. That'll send some sparks into here where all the uh, gunpowder lives. Right. And the gunpowder ignites. And you know, this is all the business I talked about a, a minute ago. All this stuff kind of lives kind of like this. And it just sends all of this stuff, not just the bullet, but all this stuff here as well downrange. So if you're standing fairly close to your target, you may, you often do, see multiple holes in the target because the, these bits here will also hit the target. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, they won't, they'll go through paper. They're not going to do much damage. I mean, th th this thing here is the, uh, what carries the oomph. Yeah. But yeah, it's very common to see multiple holes in your paper, even if you're shooting a slug. Yep. And so the whole reason for this exercise, I wasn't planning on making a video or anything, but what I wanted to do is I had a couple of these guys from, from the range from before, so I thought ah, it'd be neat just on my desk to have some of the projectiles that, that I just commonly shoot. And so once I you know pulled a few of these guys out of the, uh, out of the shell casings, well then what the heck am I going to do with all this gunpowder? And the obvious answer is... Well, let's put a match to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh boy. Yes, don't do this in your basement. No.